Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 35 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am getting ready to do one of the most exciting parts of Applied Energistics. That's right, it's time to look at auto-crafting. Yeah, I can't wait. Luckily, auto-crafting is really pretty easy to do uh, in Applied Energistics, and we're going to get started right away. Hooray! So let's go downstairs and see what our situation is. Oh, right, I probably shouldn't have broken that block. That's okay, I will live. Uh, let's go see how our connection is going here uh, with facades and all this good stuff. So this cable running over here is currently using three channels. We learned last episode that normal cables can only transmit uh, eight uh, channels of energy, and this one's using seven, so we're, we're in pretty uh, tight usage right there. Um, over on this side of the world, let's see, this is coming out of the bottom of the connector piece here, so we can see the bottom one's using two channels right now. That might be sufficient to, to add on to. Uh, we, of course, also have this side that we can hook into. Uh, or no, this is actually coming out of the right side. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll figure this out. Yeah. So this is coming out of the right side. You know, I got addicted to the way that Ender.io hides uh, the facades when you're using a certain tool. I should request that of every other mod in existence. But anyway, so two channels coming out the right side here. We, of course, still have several other sides to this controller before we need to upgrade our network. We can hit the bottom. We can hit that side. Um, you know, we can even hit the right side here. So let's, for now, tap onto this conduit line and hook up our first auto crafting system. So I've already done most of the crafting off camera that we don't have to worry too much about this. I'm gonna plop this guy right up here and throw down an ME pattern terminal. We're gonna use that in a minute. And then we're also probably going to hook in down here. Let's hook up, um, I wanna say we'll put a molecular assembler here and we'll put this guy here and we'll see how many channels we're using now. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four in total. So do I need a cable going into the ME interface? Uh, that's a online, that one maybe needs a cable, I'm not sure. Well, one quick and easy way to find out. Using an extra channel? No. All right, cool, so I guess I don't need uh, that guy, right? Because we've got one, two, three, well, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Can I put stuff in here and we'll head back to the main system? So ME interfaces are cool, yes. So that means it's working because anything you insert into an ME interface will automatically go into the A8 system, cool. And anything you place in the config top slot here, it'll automatically keep that item always available for you. So provided that those items exist, every time you pull it out, it'll match how many you request. So if I tell it to keep three in there, it'll always keep three available for me. Cool, right? ME interfaces, super useful. Uh, and if you place too many in there, it'll kick out the extras, right? So it'll always send them um, back to where they belong. So if we throw those in, you can see it's doing what we want. So the ME interface is hooked up and the molecular assembler should also be connected as well. We can see that by the glowing hook up there. Nice. So now that we have that ready, and I'm just gonna steal my detailed cobblestone. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of that so it doesn't keep those around anymore. Cover up the floor a little bit. Let's get our very first bit of auto crafting going. You ready? Let's do it. Um, may not want this here though. I might want him to actually exist on top of the molecular assembler. And with that, um, I just wanna make sure, yeah, it's still hooked up. So that's cool, nice. So we'll cover up this floorboard and we're ready to do this. So in order to get the molecular assembler this block here auto crafting for us because that's exactly what it is it's just an auto crafting table that works with an ae network all we have to do and this is really easy is the following create uh some patterns that go in there so i'm going to once again sort up a number of items and we're going to look for a blank pattern as an item to craft this guy Okay, so this is the item that we need to craft. It's going to need either a pure Surtis Quartz Crystal, some Glowstone, some Quartz Glass. Cool. So let's get that. I'm going to get a blank pattern. So when we craft down in this window, which we're about to do, I'm going to make a few of these. Oh, looks like we need some more Quartz Glass. No problemo. Cool. Make a few of these blank patterns. So we've got pure Certus Quartz. I think we have a decent amount of pure Certus Quartz. Yeah, half a stack. How are we for glass? Not terribly good. How are we for sand? Not terribly bad. We'll start cooking some up while I'm crafting here. 
So this is furnace mode, right? Good. One more set of glass and we should be in good shape. So what I'm going to do is tell this thing, in order to make blank patterns, we can just uh, shift click the recipe in here and you'll see that just like a normal crafting window, we can craft this thing, but instead we're going to hit this encode pattern button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make an encoded pattern that records the crafting recipe of a blank pattern. And we can insert that right here in the ME interface. Sweet. Uh, if we want to make anything else, for example, quartz glass, that's something we're going to need to make. Uh, so let's go ahead and teach the system how it works. Encode the pattern. So we just have to have them in there. Boom. And you'll notice that when it's in an interface or when you hold shift, you can see a picture of what the thing's actually going to craft. Now we have immediate access to auto craft these things. Um, let's see, what's something else that we make a lot? Oh, I don't know. Let's take a look at interfaces. I know something we make a lot of. Uh, we're probably going to want to know how to make annihilation and formation cores. Cool. So let's start getting some of those. So we will do this. Um, clear that out of there. All right. Um, annihilation. Encode. And formation core. Encode. Nice. So you'll note that we will eventually run out of spots in this interface. The good news is, is that we have six um, sides of this molecular assembler that we can tap into. So all we really need to do is, um, you know, hook up more interfaces to all six sides of the molecular assembler. Once that's done, we're going to need more molecular assemblers. We'll handle that when we run into that problem. But for now, I think we'll be all right. So we should have access to autocraft stuff now. So if we wanted to make more blank patterns because we're out of them, when we look up blank pattern, we'll see that we have the option to craft it. Cool. However, we don't have everything we need just yet. We need some crafting CPUs. So let's get those things ready. You'll notice down here, it's telling me even though we have all the items, we don't have any crafting CPUs available. So crafting CPUs are a multi-block structure, similar to the ME controller, that's main responsibility is built around um, crafting for us. So it's kind of the brains that figures out what crafting processes need to happen and tracks it all. So in order to have a crafting CPU, it's a multi-block structure. Like I said, the main thing that you're going to want to get started with is some kind of uh, crafting storage. This is the memory that's going to be temporarily used to track all the different craftings you want to do. You could start off with a 1K if you wanted to. I'm going to recommend we start off with a 4K though. So let's get an ME 4K uh, storage component here. So let's get one, two, three of these. Okay. And then we'll uh, upgrade this guy to a 4K uh, storage component. So like that. And then all we're going to need is a crafting unit. This guy. Nice. That was easy. Uh, then we can go ahead and get 4K crafting unit there and we're ready to go. Sweet. All right, so the 4K crafting unit's job is going to be, uh, like I said, just hanging out here doing some cool stuff. Let's jump downstairs for a minute, just check real quick on our um, number of used channels. So we can see we're currently using four, uh, three going up in that direction and one going off in that direction. Cool. And I'm pretty sure it's the interface using a channel, not the um, assembler, I think. Pretty sure we'll see. Uh, anyway, the crafting storage unit, does that use a channel? We're going to find out. Yes, it does. Look at that. Now we're using four up there and one over there. Um, so we can see when we look at the uh, crafting storage block, it's, it's able to tell us what the current crafting status is. In other words, what it's working on making for us. Um, so when we go ahead and request some more blank patterns, for example, if we request 10 of these, probably um, we're going to see, oh cool, it's able to use quartz glass and quite clear glass. It's being pretty smart right now. It's knowing that we need to use glass and it's automatically doing ore dictionary stuff for us. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, you can see the crafting CPU it's going to use is automatically determined. We could tell it to use crafting CPU number zero, which is the guy over there. You can see its storage is 4096 because we did a 4K. And the number of coprocessors is zero, but we're going to leave it at automatic. It doesn't matter because there's really only one, but you could have multiple of these, like different multi-blocks. Um, the only other thing to note, coprocessors, I'll tell you about in a minute. So let's hit start on this thing, and we should see it automatically crafting. And if we come over here, we'll see the crafting process. So it's going ahead, it's making some quartz glass, and it's making everything we need. And if we look at our blank patterns now, we should see 10 of them available. 
Nice. So anything that you craft a lot of or semi-frequently, we're going to want to auto-craft so that we don't have to do it manually anymore. That's something I like the idea of. So uh, long story short, that is awesome. I like it. Let's go ahead and snag this stuff. And you know what? While I'm here, I might as well just clear out the whole darn chest. And I'm just going to put it all into the A system. No reason to have that stuff there. There we go. Uh, so we've got a pretty cool auto crafting system here. Now all we have to do is continue to add patterns, which is really pretty easy to do. And as needed, we'll have to make more ME interfaces. Since we're gonna have to make more ME interfaces, we might as well teach this thing how to do it. So if we tell it how to make an ME interface, which is done like so, encode, done, plop it in there, we should now be able to request an ME interface, right? Do we have everything we need? We do, awesome. Next, start, boom, done, got it, ready to go. I'll plop it down right there. I'm um, pretty sure that's gonna wind up using another channel. You can see a second channel in use on this line. So every ME interface uses a channel, but not um, the molecular assembler. Nice. So keep that in mind as we're starting to use up channels. We're going to have to start uh, considering pretty soon uh, expanding this and having more and more channels. Speaking of, let me kill a spider so I can get more string. But more importantly, I'm going to grab um, some shears and go visit my friend the sheep because I want to keep a uh, handle on having lots and lots of wool. At some point, maybe I'll automate this, but for now I'm just running over and snacking it every now and then. Automating a wool farm shouldn't be too hard. We'll get to it. All right, back in a minute when we're ready to move on to the next stage. So as we're adding all kinds of new stuff to this system, I'm thinking it might be a good idea to start monitoring the transfer and output of power that we've got going on here. So let's take a look at making something that can do that for us. Oh, nice. We have almost everything we need to do this. We just need a redstone, uh, a couple redstone torches, and we should be in good shape. So... Um, you know what? Sticks is something that I almost always like to teach this system how to make. So let's do that. Uh, not a bad idea. Encode sticks. And we might as well, while we're at it, encode wood too, because we want to make sure that when we request sticks, if we don't have any pieces of wooden planks, we can get it. So I should be able to request like, I don't know, 110 of these. Sure. And it'll really quickly make that. Nice. I can get three of these now, and I can get back to making my power monitor. You'll find that once you get used to auto crafting with AE2, it becomes a little bit addicting and you really don't want to ever stop. It's a problem. It's okay. I can stop auto crafting anytime I want. Honestly, I can. I'm not kidding. So we're going to need some um, machine capacitors. So let's get this guy and we might as well get a capacitor going while we can. Oh, that is cool. Gotta love the auto crafting stuff. And now I should be able to get a machine chassis and I just need some electrical steel. I'm not going to implement auto crafting on this stuff just yet, but pretty soon I will. So iron nugget, coal powder, and silicon. All right, let's get some coal powder and iron. By the way, some good tips, you can right click to get a half a stack, you can shift right click to get a single stack, and uh, if you already have something that you're trying to auto craft, uh, for example, if we have, uh, what do we have here, glass. So we have quartz glass, we can auto craft this with a middle click and it'll force an auto craft even if we already have some quartz glass. Cool. So let's get some silicon and we can head over and start cooking this up in the alloy furnace. And I'll be back in a minute once it finishes cooking. Oh, you know what, silly me, I knew I had a conduit or a power monitor somewhere and I found it right here. So let's pick this guy up. And uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bring it downstairs and make sure we're on our main power line so we can see how much energy we're using across the base. So power monitor can sit right here, okay? So we're right around 74 RF per tick. So we're using half of a magmatic dynamo. So these guys are probably each producing around, yeah. All right, cool. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, quick detour. While I was downstairs, I noticed something. So I need a drum. I need to store a lot of liquid really fast. Uh, let's also get some conduits here. Um, pressurized fluid conduits, that'll do. I should probably clean up these item filter things because that's gonna be a nuisance every time I search for conduits. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. We have a full liquid tank of experience, which is awesome. Uh, except for the fact that it's full and we're probably going to start having some issues with the amount of uh, experience 
orbs and stuff floating around here. So let's just fly outside. So this stone must be, yes it is, sweet. So if we just tap into this guy, how do I want this to run? I would like the drum to sit maybe here. Might not be a terrible spot. That's funny, that thing turned. It's probably just a visual bug. So what I'll do then is just run this around the outside here. And we can configure this guy to disabled. Disabled. And straight over to here. There we go. Cool. Now just a simple matter of maybe I can sneak by as an endermini. Notice the enderminis are a little bit smaller and they can sneak by things that bats can't. Only downside of course is that they can't fly, but that's okay. There we go. Connected. Cool. So any excess liquids will make its way into the drum. So we had about five buckets worth in there, almost six, that were starting to backlog. So this will be like a secondary storage unit for the drum. Cool. All right, guys, I'm doing a little bit of rewiring down in my basement because I would love to have uh, just some better wiring all around. Uh, I've been kind of sloppy with my wiring, which is never a good thing. And as a result, uh, it's making it a little bit harder for me to expand right now. So there we go. As you can see, I'm trying to get more wiring underground than not. Um, this wire here, not an ideal situation. I guess for now I'll, I'll keep it up here, but I'm gonna at least uh, do it like this maybe, and I'll clean this up a little bit better later, but at least for now. Of course there would be uh, gravel here in my way. Let me get my excavator. It'll make things easier. Excavator, where are you? There you are. See? Much easier. So I can get rid of all this stuff up here. And this will keep all my farms and everything running uh, without intruding mostly on where I want my stuff to be. Oh, get that back into power mode. There we go. In fact, I might as well have you in everything mode again. There we go. Slightly more uh, clean and tidy. Beautiful. So what this means is now I can have a little bit of a workspace down here uh, with which to do things. So let's first clean up the flooring. And of course I'll probably fix that wiring and such later, but for now it'll suffice, like I said. There we go. Temporarily throw some torches on the ground, even though I said I hate that. I do, but gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, so I should have access to that area up here now. Cool. So right here I want to throw an elevator that I prepared. And down here is going to be an extension of my uh, auto crafting system. Getting to be nighttime, let's sleep through the night real quick. Okay, so here's the elevator that'll go up and down to my auto crafting area down here. So right now we've got things like the sag mill and the alloy smeltery. By the way, keep in mind that none of these things right now are hooked up. So if we do any mining and we get any iron ore, for example, uh, we're going to be in a lot of trouble because it's not going to get auto processed. Something we're going to need to fix probably right now-ish. So let's take care of that. Cleaning up all this junk I collected and probably don't need the bone either. All right, let's get some cables. So we're going to definitely want some of the smart cable that we've got here. And I wouldn't mind getting some more regular old cable. So let's see. 
That should be enough to hold us over. Uh, I wouldn't mind also having a new uh, line of conduit come out of here. So let's just go. You know what I can do to prevent this from sticking? Um, cable anchors. Yeah. Pretty sure if I stick a cable anchor on a block like so, it will prevent yes the cable from connecting so that cable anchor is blocking the connection here nice and if we get some more anchors because we're going to want some of these they will prevent the connection here as well so if i wanted to i could just go straight down that would probably be my best bet there we go so you can see um i'm going to cable anchor this thing come on now that should do nice Awesome. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is put um, this guy here. So you can see he's currently not using any channels. He's not connected to this thing, and he's not connected to that thing. Awesome. So cable anchors, a great way to prevent connections when you don't want them. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with my idea of at least having um, that like that. Awesome. So it's a little bit easier to see how many of each channel each side i'm using channels on like i said we'll eventually upgrade these to like 32 cables so we wouldn't have to worry too much about that but like i said for now we'll stick with what we're doing so that's cool we still have a uh, this side to come out of as well so straight down is what's going to lead to um the area that i've been talking about which should be right about here nice all right so i'm going to run this probably back to here and come up There we go. Cool. So we can run this guy right along to here. Okay. Uh, we don't want this connection here, so can we cable anchor this guy, please? No. This side. I'm cable anchoring every side except the one that I want to. I think it's partially bad mood that causes that. All right, so that looks good. Preventing connections and down we shall go. Cool. So by the way, guys, I'm real quick going to teach this system here how to make everything needed um, to make a machine chassis from Ender IO because I wanna auto craft those things, right? So uh, the first thing we're gonna need are some gold ingots. So let's get those. I just taught the system how to make gold ingots, but that's okay. Well, I didn't teach it yet technically, but I will in a minute. So let's get these guys placed in here. That's a good start. So you can see we've already filled up one ME interface. We're going to need more of these, definitely. Uh, what else are we going to need for the machine chassis? Uh, we should teach it how to make these guys. And uh, let's see, where are we at with capacitors? We should be able to craft one. Start. Cool. And then I can tell it how to make a chassis. Cool. Actually, clear that out. I want... I did that backwards. Chassis... We'll teach you how to make the iron bars in code and this guy in code. Cool. So we'll start filling up this second place here. So now if we ever want a chassis, uh, we can get one. You can see I've made a sag mill. I'm going to want two more machine chassis. So let's auto craft them. Boom. Done and done. Awesome, right? Uh, I want to get some alloy furnaces or alloy smelters. So we're going to need two of you. One, two. And six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as easy as that, we've got some sag mills and alloy furnaces. Cool. Uh, let's get ourselves a few interfaces as well. I'm thinking we're going to need three overall. That's all the resources we're going to need to get three of them. So a few seconds later, one, two, three. Nice. Oh, man, I'm already getting excited about auto crafting. Let's get to it. So uh, if we want to auto craft stuff that we need uh, machines for, this is how we do it. It's really quite easy. I'm going to set up this smeltery to be 
uh, the furnace one. I'm going to set this smeltery to be the alloy one. We're going to definitely want some power, so let's drop into bat mode and tap into our power line that we just conveniently ran across here. Uh, do I still have my excavator? I do. Awesome. Let's get our hammer too. Just make things easier on ourselves. And there you go. And I better light this area up down here. We don't want monsters spawning underneath things, do we? That would not be fun. Some stone, please. Thank you. So these guys should all have the power they need to get up and running. Cool. All we need to do now is hook in a line of interfaces. Okay, now the interfaces are pretty smart. They shouldn't need to be told what direction to face. You can see, by the way, we're now using three channels because we have three things hooked up here. Uh, if you want to force them to connect to a block, you can, uh, let's see, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's just right click. There we go. You can right click to change uh, what direction it's facing. It might need to be on a certain side. So, for example, we can right click here and you can see it's now facing downwards, that kind of thing. Eh, not really necessary to do though. Uh, we can just plop it down. It shouldn't be necessary, like I said, because um, I think in this version of Applied Energistics, interfaces won't try to put objects into each other. So it should only place it into the most uh, non-interface block, which is just the ones below it. Shouldn't have anywhere else to place items. So for example, if we wanted to teach this system, I don't know, uh, something that we need to sag mill up. So uh, let's see, how's my lighting down here, by the way? It's good. So let's say coal dust. That sounds like a good one, right? So in order to get pulverized coal or coal powder from Ender IO, we're going to need coal, right? Um, come here, you. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell this thing um, coal yields coal powder. But it won't let us program this unless we change it from a crafting style pattern to a processing style pattern. Now we've told this thing that this isn't just a regular old crafting recipe that's done in a vanilla crafting table. It's actually processed in some kind of machine. So now we told this thing how to make coal powder. Nice. And if we wanted to teach it how to make electrical steel, for example, uh, we would know that it's iron plus pulverized coal plus silicon. So let's tell it that. So iron plus pulverized coal plus silicon yields electrical steel. Encode, done and done. Cool. So what we should be able to do is go downstairs now and tell the machine that's above the sag mill, hey, your job is to create coal powder, you're done there. Now what's cool about under I.O. is we can have it automatically output. So I'm going to configure the I.O. here to push any objects that land in its inventory up to the top. It should still be able to accept them, uh, but it'll instead also push them out to the top. Cool, right? Now which one was my alloy? This should be regular furnace. So this is my alloy furnace. You're going to go here and you're going to be configured uh, the same way output top and you can also be configured to output top. Cool, right? So let's go upstairs and request some electrical steel be crafted for us. So we want three. All right, so you can see everything's about to be used. Start. If we go downstairs, we'll see this process cooking up. Nice, it's already working. Uh, what I probably wouldn't mind doing is speeding this up because usually when I want to request things, I'm kind of in a hurry. I don't want to wait. So a good plan will be to get some capacitors for these. think I'm going to teach my system how to auto-craft the top tier of capacitor. And while I'm at it, probably how to auto-craft all the components. So let's make sure that that's an easy process for us to follow. Boom, just finished and you can see it output to the top. Nice, that's what I wanted to do. All right, so while we're at it, let's see what's required for the top tier of capacitor. Um, what we should do is actually look it up here. And a double layer capacitor is made like so. All right, so we should have one capacitor handy and ready to go. Storage, coprocessors, no crafting CPUs are available. Probably because this guy is busy crafting electrical steel. That's okay, he should be done in a second. This is also the reason we want to speed this up. We don't want our crafting processors to be tied up making stuff. Are you guys done yet or what? Almost. By the time I get upstairs and check, he should be about done. Electrical steel, done. Cool. 
start and done. So we're also going to need to teach this thing how to make uh, the other kind of metal that we like to use. So that is the energetic alloy. So let's do this. Energetic alloys are gold, redstone, and glowstone, right? So what I'm going to need is two of these, gold, redstone, and glowstone. I'm going to go craft one right now manually. Alloys mode. And I'm doing it up here because we already have the top tier capacitor, so it's a pretty quick process. Because remember, if you want to teach it, you need one to say, you know, what the output is. So we're going to do this. Gold, redstone, ta-da, encode. We'll put that in the alloys one. And then we can come up here and tell it how a capacitor is made. So we should now be able to make a double layer capacitor. If we switch this guy to crafting pattern mode, he'll be ready to go. Oh, we're out of blanks. Let's make a few more, shall we? We have the stuff for that. Now nah, we're missing some crystals. How about like two? Can we make two? We can make two. I'm gonna have to get around to auto crafting those crystals too. So that's gonna be a crafting process. So that goes in here. So now I should ask for a double layer capacitor and it should have no problem making two of these guys. Next, you can see all the components needed. It's gonna auto craft anything it needs to auto craft and it'll smelt up anything it needs to smelt. Right now, it's probably smelting up and waiting for these energetic alloys to finish, no problemo. Um, we should have a couple other things kind of waiting in process. So we've already got the four basic capacitors. We've got all the things that we need. We're just waiting on um, this guy. It's currently crafting, as you can see, some energetic alloys for us. Neat, huh? All right, guys, we're back. Real quick, I'm just transferring um, into my molecular assembler here all this stuff, the one on the bottom, just so I can like put it there and not have to access it now. And then I have a free one on top that I can start putting new recipes into. Sweet. So let's take a look at what else we might want to do. I'm cooking up another batch of uh, crystals down there. Might want to get that automated soon. Unfortunately, I didn't even realize it, but we've hit the wrapping up point. Wow, this episode went by fast. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here, and we'll come back next time. You can see uh, we've kind of automated a lot of crafting this episode, uh, both in machines and with regular old vanilla crafting table style mechanics. Cool, right? Uh, so what we're going to work on next episode. Uh, well, there's a few more applied energistic style stuff I'd like to get automated, but we are probably really starting to suffer on power. With my uh, stuff over there. We probably are cooking up 150 RF per tick in use. Uh, that is really right around the uh, absolute maximum that our two magmatic dynamos can produce here. You can see that we're actually probably having just barely a net gain of power, um, just barely. So uh, we're literally tapped out on power production. So we should really get started looking at more options for power. Those guys don't look totally done yet. I don't think so. So we'll let them finish. For now, Dial 20 signing off. We'll be back next time. I'm gonna invest in a power idea. Let's see what we can come up with. Um, there's a couple options, obviously, that we could figure out. And then there's a lot more stuff to do with applied energistics. I'd like to really automate as much as possible around the whole AE system type stuff. So things like the pure Certus Quartz, which just finished, it looks like. Nice. And uh, turning this on and off whenever there's an item detected there, that kind of thing, you know. Good stuff, right? So, like I said, back next episode. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, take it easy.